Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be looking at a thorough review of the Super Console X Pro. And just to be transparent, this was sent to me for review by a company called Kinhank who makes this device. And so I'll leave a link in the description to how you can order it if it's something that you want at the end of this video. We're going to do a deep dive, get it on the actual TV because this is a console that's meant to be connected to your TV. And so I know that the name is Joey's Retro Handhelds, but if I hold it in my hands, that counts as a handheld for this purpose. So we'll put it on the TV, we'll see how it works and see if it's any good. I've actually never had one of these sorts of devices. So it's my first time going into something like this. So you'll get a good kind of unfiltered experience with what I'm gonna go through. So without waiting any further, let's open the box and see what's inside. Before we do the unboxing, let's take a look at the price and where to buy it. So you can see here it's on amazon.com as well as other versions of Amazon. And there's a, a few different versions. There is the uh, 64 gig version, 256, 128, and that just changes the amount of games. So you can take a look at the top 95,000 with the 128 gig or 117,000 for the one I have here today for the 256 gig. So a few different options here that you can take a look and there's a $10 coupon on right now. All in, you're looking at about $110 uh, and this is US dollars. Uh, which we'll take a look and see if it's worth that price. There's a lot that you're getting for $110. The double controllers, the games, the actual console. Uh, there's a lot of good here. So let's take a look and jump into the unboxing. Okay, and so inside of the box, you can see there's two controllers here. They're DualShock looking controllers, pretty light. We'll get into that later. Uh, inside of the other mini box, you have the AC adapter, the USB hub, and then finally we have an HDMI cable as well as some instructions and manuals. And then a remote, which we'll show a little bit later. It's for the Android side of this box. And here's what the actual little mini console looks like. It's just, it's tiny um, and it's pretty cool looking. It's got a nice little design. There's a, a few different ports on here. You have the micro SD slot you have two USB ports and then the USB hub that's included as well. We have an AV slot, Ethernet, HDMI, and power, as well as the actual power button. Not much else to talk about on this. That's pretty much it for the ports. Uh, here's the USB hub, what that looks like. And you can just plug that in if you need to. Uh, I don't need it right now. There's not much I'm going to be connecting. Let's take a look at the controller and it's pretty light. Um, it's not exactly premium feeling, more on the cheap end of side of things. Buttons and everything just kind of feel cheap in that way. I mean, you can't really expect much for the price here. It takes uh, batteries, so you just pull off this uh, little cover here, and it's uh, two AAA batteries, so you just throw that in and off you go. As well as the little adapter that plugs into the actual console. So you just put that right in there, and that's how it connects. So I'm gonna get this all set up and then we're gonna connect it to the actual TV. Uh, so here's the AC adapter that I'm just gonna throw on as well as the uh, wireless adapter for the controller. And then I'm gonna plug in an ethernet cable and HDMI cable and off we go. Going through the boot up process and it's pretty cool. There's a, a nice little intro video that you're gonna see in a second. It's got a nice little jingle and all that. Actually, one of the cool things about this is each platform and as you go through everything, it has a nice little audio jingle from different popular songs and sounds like a meaty version of it. Uh, something that's really cool. So yeah, this, this intro is really awesome just to see. Uh, it gives you a nice introduction to what this is. They've done a, a good job here. Okay, and so once you're in, you can sort of just scroll through and go to any platform you like and jump into a game. One of the awesome things about this is there's no setup involved. So you just jump right in. You can go into some settings if you like. Uh, you can see here there's a, a few different settings if you jump right in, um, but it's not really necessary. Uh, if you're just somebody who just wants to jump right into a game, you can definitely just do that. So you can see here there's 117,000 games. There's a few that I found that just don't work or duplicates or things of that nature. So don't take that number to heart. Uh, I mean, you're not going to play all of them anyways, but I've pretty much found that it has most of the games that you'd want to play. 
So there isn't really necessary or it isn't really necessary to swap them out. You can if you want with your own ROM files. Uh, but if you just want to jump in and play your favorite games, then yeah, you have 117,000 of them that you can just jump right in. And yeah, I'm just going to jump into like Super Nintendo. You can see a whole list of games there and then back out. And if you scroll around and just go into different platforms, it's pretty much the same thing. You're just going to see a whole whack of games in the list. And it's as simple as just clicking one or, or pushing X uh, or A actually in this case and jumping right in. Uh, the button mapping is a bit weird. They have a, a dual shock controller and you think X is the button to confirm, uh, but it's actually the circle uh, or the right button where A would be on a Nintendo controller. And you can see the list of platforms here. There's a, a whole whack of them. Everything up to basically PlayStation Portable. So there's no PS2, PS3 or anything of that nature. It wouldn't be able to play it anyways. Uh, so no, don't expect GameCube or Wii or anything along those lines. Jumping into NES and this should give you an example of what's included. So there's a whole whack of games. You can just go right through and different regions sometimes, uh, not just USA. So you can see a whole whack of different things and sometimes even ROM hacks. I found for Nintendo 64, there was a bunch of Super Mario 64 ROM hacks that you'll see later. Uh, so there's a, a good variety of games here. All right, and booting up our first game, let's look at Arcade. And one thing I do want to point out before we get started, you're going to notice in the middle of my TV, there's kind of like a green discoloration. You can see it there with Maggie's face. Uh, that's my TV. Uh, there was an issue with this OLED uh, way back when. It's a manufacturer defect. It's not burn-in. Uh, it just has a blob in the middle that has a discoloration. And uh, LG wouldn't fix it for me. So unfortunately, I have to live with it. Uh, thankfully, I don't really use this TV that much except for things like this. So not a big issue. But uh, if you notice that green coloration, it's nothing to do with uh, Kin Hank or the actual console, it's my TV. Back to the game, uh, Arcade is of course going to play well. Uh, there's no concerns or issues here. For pretty much this whole console, you're going to want to be looking at that 8 and 16 bit era. Uh, I'll show you what rest of it looks like, like PSP and, and all that, but this plays really well. Great way to play these types of games, especially with two controllers, so you can play multiplayer. And it's basically start and select to get out and it'll bring you right back to the games list and then you can just move on to the next game that you want to play. So I saw Super Mario USA for the Famicom so I thought I'd just jump right in see what that looks like and I, I noticed a bit of input lag. Uh, you can see here I'm getting <laughs> hit by the uh, the shy guy or is it a shy guy? I forget what they're called um, but either way I, there's some input lag here it took me a, a while to get used to it uh, wouldn't say it's the best way to play this game, but it's an option. Yeah, and as I get along, I can get used to it a bit more with the input lag. If you're susceptible to input lag, then you might not like this or you might want to try a different controller. Uh, I didn't get a chance to try anything else besides the ones they included. Plus, I wanted to kind of review it on its own merits of what's included in the box. Uh, but I imagine if you want to try other controllers, see if there's less input lag. That's just something that you have to get used to have to check this out because I love Pokemon. Pokemon Blue, uh, you can change the coloration. So I changed it here. It was just straight black and white out of the box. Uh, I made it the Game Boy Color colors uh, because I like that. I mean, there's going to be no issues here. And so one of the things that you're probably wondering is why is the screen so small? Uh, why am I not stretching it or kind of the aspect ratio just kind of spreading it out? Uh, and the reason being, I had a lot of issues with different settings. Uh, when I would try and change different things for this box, uh, I would run into errors or green screens or, or things like that. And, and I'll show you that later. Uh, just some issues that I've run into. So I kind of gave up and I'm like, ah, I'm just going to play this <laughs> the way that they want me to play it. I don't want to make any changes. I don't want to screw anything up because it just keeps breaking. Uh, so that's just one thing as well that you might want to be aware of. Uh, it's a great console or a great platform for just the way that it's expected to be used out of the box uh, but I wouldn't really plan on making a bunch of changes because that's where I think things fall apart a little bit uh, and it's just something I've noticed. Continuing on and we have Game Boy Advance here and Legend of Zelda and Minish Cap and just wanted to kind of try out see what it looked like and, and it looks and plays great. So, I mean, like I said before, 8 and 16-bit era, you're not going to have any issues. You can fast forward quite a bit. Uh, I'm showing that off here. It, it gets pretty quick. So, you don't have to worry about not having enough power for fast forwarding either. If you want to play some Pokemon games or 
any older games that you just want to fast forward through certain sections. And not to keep repeating myself, but Game Boy Color and trying out Aladdin here and everything plays great. Probably one of the consoles, the Game Boys, the Super Nintendo, Nintendo, all that sort of thing would be your best bets for this console. I think that's where it plays nicely and you'll probably have the best time. Lastly, just showing off Sega Genesis and this one actually ended up using pretty much the entire screen. Uh, nothing that I changed on my part, so part of the emulator settings, like I said, I didn't want to screw around because every time I changed something, it ended up breaking something else, uh, so I kind of left it, but it's nice to see that whatever settings they're using for Genesis is using the correct scaling, uh, so you don't have any issues here, and it'll scale. Um, I'm using a 4K TV, so uh, it's good to just have that upscaled uh, all the way. Jumping into Nintendo DS, and like most DS and any console, the only issue here is games that have that dual screen issue if they need touchscreen or anything along those lines. Thankfully, you can see there on the right, and it just disappeared, but there is a way to touch the touchscreen using the controller. There's a, an emulated version of that for Jurassic here. So it's not a huge concern unless it's a game that really requires touchscreen and then you're going to run into a bunch of issues. But you can see that pen icon on the right there. I wouldn't get this for DS especially, but it is an option for some games that you don't really care about what's on that second screen or don't need the touchscreen. PlayStation 1, as usual, is playing great. Uh, not going to have concerns or issues here. Uh, I think you can pretty much run this on anything. PS1 is one of those systems that at this point you can just run anywhere it's not like nintendo 64 which i'll show in a bit um, but you won't have any issues with ps1 uh, and it's a good way to play this you might get away with uh, upgrading the resolution on here there's a, a way in retroarch to do that again <laughs> i had issues with doing different things so i kind of just left it as what the box had um, but if you wanted to you can definitely enable that and it, it seems like it's fast enough to allow that custom resolutions or uh, upgraded resolutions if you'd like and the last console before we jump into the ones that I have problems with is Super Mario World and Super Nintendo. Uh, and again, no issues here. For some reason, I actually had better input lag than I did before with the Famicom version. So it wasn't really a concern afterwards or either I got used to it. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, but it is something just to be aware of. But Super Nintendo, of course, is, is playing well. And it's correctly upscaled here with the aspect ratio. So you don't have to worry there. Uh, looks awesome with the designs on the side to not have just black bars you have a kind of nice overlay uh, which is awesome as well and now we're going to jump into the consoles that have issues or not that great so my usual test is Mario tennis because that one just never runs well on lower end hardware and it's the same here you can see that it slows down quite a bit uh, not something that i'm new to Mario tennis has a lot of problems with lower end hardware you can see some of the differences with Nintendo 64 where you're going to have an issue like this with Mario Tennis. But then if you jump into something like Mario Kart 64, this actually runs pretty well. So Nintendo 64, like usual, it's all going to depend on the game that you want to play. There's a lot of games that will run well, like Mario Kart 64, and then there's some that won't, like Mario Tennis. So it'll be up to you, but... If you're expecting perfect Nintendo 64, this won't be for you and you really have to get into a little bit more expensive hardware to do that. But it's perfect enough for whatever you, your use case might be if you want to just do some Nintendo 64 and don't mind slow down in some games. And this continues into Dreamcast. Uh, a lot of Dreamcast will play pretty well. Uh, Crazy Taxi is my usual test of this as well and it's playable. There, there's no concern here for me. Uh, I would be fine playing this at these frame rates and speed. Uh, you don't really feel the lower frame rate. It's not a concern. Knowing you can play Dreamcast is a, a good benefit. And it makes it really fun because it's just another platform that you can jump right in. And now moving into PlayStation Portable, which is the highest end, I guess, platform that you can say for this device. It's playable for some games, I'd say. Uh, I wanted to try out GTA Vice City Stories and just kind of see for a game like this where it's more action based how it would run. For the most part JRPGs and turn based and all that you won't have any issues. But the moment that we get near the tunnel or into the tunnel that's where all those frame drops really happen. So you're going to see in a second here that we're going to hit a bunch of frame drops and uh, a lower than average frame. And we're in the 20s under, under 20s now closer to 15. It all depends on your version of playable if this will be working for you 
Now, as I mentioned before, there's an Android side to this device as well. Uh, if you unplug the SD card or take it out, it'll boot into the Android side. And I don't know if you'd really want this in 2023, to be honest with you. It's running Android 7, so it's quite far away back. Um, it has a bunch of apps. You can put Netflix and all that on it. I don't know if Netflix actually works with Android 7. I don't have a Netflix subscription to check, but there is an option here if you want to use Android. I Again, I'm not sure if this is even worth it to anybody at this point, uh, given the year and kind of the older version, uh, but it is something that you can have and, and use if you'd like. So I mentioned issues earlier and let's talk about them. I'm going to try and boot up Super Mario 64 USA. You can see there's about five or six different versions of this game. And I've run into this a few times, but it just leads to an error screen like this. So it's just blank uh, with a black screen. And that just means RetroArch is having issues with either that ROM or just booting up in general. You're going to run into a lot of this sometimes. There's 117,000 games. Not all of them work. Not all of them are good. So just be aware it might be an issue for this device. One other issue that I ran into is I wanted to change the Emulex settings from 1080p to 3840, so 4K, because it's a 4K TV and it does 60 Hertz. When I did that, it led me to a, a green screen and I could not get out of it no matter what I tried. What was cool is when I Googled that error, I found a Ken Hank video on how to fix it. So they must have known that this is a known issue and they kind of figured out ahead of time how to save people from it. Their first step actually worked perfectly for me, so I got it back up and running. But it was a concern but and an issue and, and something that I wasn't expecting. Uh, so just add it to the list of potential issues. The reason that this happened for me was that it thinks that it's not a supported kind of resolution for my TV, even though it does 3840 by 60. So I'm not sure what exactly was the issue here, but I just ended up leaving it at 1080p. Uh, I thought I would be able to fix the issues with Game Boy and all that, having a smaller screen and then it using the larger screen by changing that resolution, uh, but it obviously didn't work. And lastly, one other issue I want to just mention, I tried to boot up a Game Gear game, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, and you can see here it just goes straight to a Windows looking error screen. I've had this happen a few times with different ROMs. Uh, so like I said before, with the RetroArch issue, it just seems like it's something that could happen with certain ROMs. Not sure why, uh, I wasn't too worried about it, but just keep in mind that this might be a concern or an issue as well. Uh, it just didn't affect a lot of the games that I tried. And so let's do a, a wrap up here. I actually don't mind this device. This was the first time I've tried something like this, of just a home console at home with uh, controllers included and all that. I've typically been using an Nvidia Shield for a lot of these purposes, uh, or just home consoles uh, on my PC. Uh, so this was cool to see something like this. And if I would recommend it or not, depends on you. If you just wanna pick up something like this that straight out of the box, it works, you don't have to change anything, it has controllers and you can just jump right in, then yeah, this is perfect. Uh, obviously there's some tweaks and, and things like that that you could do, uh, but just right out of the box, it works. And that says a lot. Alternatives to this, if you'd like, a lot of the handheld consoles that I review and, and other options, they do have HDMI out as well as the option to connect other controllers. So if you'd like to buy like something like the RG353PS, which I just reviewed, you can pick one of those up, connect it through HDMI to your TV, and then connect some other controllers and off you go. Obviously, this is going to cost you a lot more than this device would. Adding in the controllers, the cables, all of that. Uh, so it's not cost effective in any way. So that's why I think for this, this is a really cool device for anybody looking to just jump right in. And that's going to be it for this one. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, check out my other videos. I've done reviews on a lot of different handheld devices now, uh, even other controllers and things of that nature. So you can find a whole bunch on my channel. Just take a look, see what you like and go from there. Please don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow and hope you all have a good one.